Good afternoon. Um, hi, welcome to my broadcast. A smidge earlier today. Uh, welcome to episode 755. And the topic today is actually, I, I, I'm sure I quote all of the rings, sort of, kind of, which is, um, you know, one ring to rule them, all, rule them all. So the topic today is one relationship to rule them all. Rule them all. Sorry, I'm trying to articulate clearly. Um, and the second part is don't forget this one. So I'm going to break that down. You may already guess where I'm going with this one, but I wanted to give a more, more um, entertaining title and drop some teachings. So come along and let's talk. Before I jump into the talk, though, let me introduce myself and who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a relationship book for singles and couples. Um, I put the link in the comments, of course, so you can check it out. And I'm also an inspirational speaker and a um, passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why, and I work mostly with women because of being a passionate champion for the feminine, and also is what inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And this is episode number 755, so there's a bunch of these out there, and I'll give you the links to where to find the replays and the archives after the broadcast, or at the end of the broadcast. And this, by the way, is a Facebook Live I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but since I'm going to be out of the house and on the road at 5 p.m., I thought I'd do it at 4 p.m. instead. So, topic again today is one relationship to rule them all and, what, and not to forget about it. And the reason I'm saying it that way is because, as you may have guessed, the relationship I'm going to speak about is the one with yourself. Dun, 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 surprise. But the thing about that I'm going to speak to is it is more important and it is the one that rules every other relationship. And I mean it from this point of view. Because I don't mean it from the point of view that this relationship is going to boss everybody else around. No, what I mean is that your relationship with yourself will override and rule every experience in every relationship you have. Was that clear enough? Let me say it again another way. If your relationship with yourself isn't healthy and whole, then all the other relationships around you will tend not to be either. Getting a clue now? Let me say it another way. <laughs> if every relationship around you is challenging and upsetting and not working right, you might want to think about looking at the one inside with yourself as a clue to what's going wrong outside. Okay, now three different angles are saying the same thing, meaning that your relationship with yourself impacts and influences and, in, and um, alters every other relationship out there. So if your relationships in the world, romantic, business, social, spiritual, whatever relationships you have out there, including primary one and family relationships too, if all those relationships are working great, then you don't need to listen anymore. <laughs> you can sign up right now. But if you're like most people, at least some of those relationships, if not all of them, are challenging. They are presenting friction for you to work through, so to speak. There's a wonderful quote from a friend of mine, Lisa Nichols, who says that relationships are like gifts wrapped in sandpaper. And I like the idea of that because it means that a lot of relationships create friction and tension between you and them that can be worked out. Now, that's not saying you should go looking for that, but relationships will tend to offer opportunities to, um, to sandpaper those frictioning, those challenging points. But the thing about it is those relationships are giving you feedback for the friction to be reduced inside yourself with the relationship inside yourself. Because here's some, here's, some, here's some data points. Well, not, not, not statistical points, but factual things you want to learn about, which is this. First of all, your relationship with yourself can be either additive to all those around you or subtractive to them. Subtractive, what does that mean? It means that if you aren't, for example, taking care of yourself really well, and you're not necessarily loving yourself the way that you need to be loved, as in terms of being loving and support and caring for yourself, you may be feeling the need to go look at it for it out there. And unfortunately, the love and affection and care from, from coming out there will never be enough to fill up your own love inside. They'll have to constantly keep giving it to you because if you're in a place where you're, need, you're needing love, desperate for love, and your partner's supposed to keep providing it, the impact of that will last a short period of time. So perhaps when they tell you they love you and they fill you up and you feel really loved by them, that works great for about 10 hours or five hours or two days. But after that, you're gonna need, re need reminding again to feel loved because otherwise the love will start to wear off. The solution or the workaround or the um, true way to do it is to really love yourself first. When you are in a loving relationship with who you are, 
then when your partner tells you they love you, that's gravy, that's wonderful, that's, a, that's on top of that, it's ebullient. Is that good? Yeah, ebullient's a good word. And it's additive to who you are more than what you already, or, or your love you already have. And what happens is that becomes more long-lasting because you don't need them to make you feel loved. You already love yourself. But when they do love you, it's even better. So the key is to put the application of the, of the um, relationship skills internally. And so it's that love relationship you have with yourself that will absolutely improve all the relationships around you. So if you want to improve the relationship with your partner, now I'm going to say this carefully. <laughs> if you're in a relationship with your partner that's working okay, it's not like there's trauma, challenges, upset, everything else, that's working okay and you want to make it even better, focusing on the relationship with yourself is one powerful way to make that happen. You may be thinking like, how does that work? The reason I'm saying this is because for most people, and I've talked about this before in other ways, so I'm going to bring it back again, is they've been raised in a paradigm where they think that being in a relationship is a codependent experience, not overtly or consciously, but underneath everything, it's codependent, meaning that we tend to go in a relationship where we think the other person is going to complete us. As in Jerry Maguire saying, you complete me. That line is one of the worst, most heinous falsehoods about relationships I've ever heard. So if you believe that, here's a little wake-up call. Nobody can complete you. Nobody can complete you. Your relationship partner can make you feel great, but if you let them make you feel great, they can make you feel bad too. It's a seesaw on this one. So when you come to a place where nobody's going to complete you, because you already are complete, that's the secret by the way, what you need to do really is remember that. And when you start to really own your completeness, then your partner has, doesn't have to work so hard. But what happens though, is they get to enjoy you even more because the more full you are, the more loving, the more whole you are, the more attractive you become, which improves the quality of your relationships. Now, of course, this is ideally the situation where you is doing the same, you're doing this, this thing for yourself and your partner's doing it for themselves as well because that's a, that's a much more powerful way of doing it. If you're just doing it for yourself and your partner's doing it, not doing anything, you might find it's getting very out of balance where they just keep feeding on your energy and that's not good. So I'm just seeing a part that go, no, I'm not going to go there. Okay, so coming back to yourself, because I want to stay with this point, is that your relationship with yourself is the pivotal, the fundamental, the most powerful place you can do the work yourself. When you're in a relationship with yourself in a healthy way, when you love and appreciate who you are, when you take care of yourself, when you put yourself first, when you say no to things that don't work for you, when you keep your agreements, when you trust yourself, I'm making a long list here, you may have guessed. When you do all these things for yourself, then every other relationship has less requirement on you because you're already taking care of yourself. It becomes more positive and uplifting because you're already in a place that's healthy with yourself. I keep saying this in other ways, and I'm going to give you like 17 different ways of saying it. But the relationship with yourself is the governing energy over every other relationship. So why not make the one with yourself better than ever? So that way everything else around you raises. Someone like when you raise your vibration, everything around you raises too. Every relationship that you have with yourself will be improved when you improve the relationship with yourself. I think I said that like seven different times and I think, oh, by now you've got it. So how do you do that? Let's, let's just start with the how. So let's talk about what it is. Let's talk about the how. I want to say, I want to give you some teaching. I want to give you some keys before I tell you to work with me because that's part, that's part of my like delivery at the end of this. But the first thing you do is practice loving yourself. Now, there's different ways of doing that. It can be such things as um, exercising more or eating better, or doing stretching and, and yoga, things like that to take care of yourself. Consciously doing things to up-level up your physical well-being is a smart thing to do anyway, but it also creates a better relationship with yourself. Now, do this from a point of view of joy and celebration, not a punitive desperation, because some people go healthy and stuff because they're really worried about their health and they're stressing and they're not happy. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is, is when, you have, when you make, for example, if you cook for yourself, enjoy the moment and enjoy the sensuality of that experience. That'll really up-level your relationship with yourself. Um, whether you do, whether you're in a relationship or not, do things like that that will add quality to the relationship. If you're working, if you're with your partner, cook together, create together, do fun things together in the kitchen. That can be wonderful as well. Okay, I'm going out of part. Let me come back. I was, I was, I was going to this whole thing about food and cooking for a moment. Let's come back to other things. Other things you do for yourself is um, take care to to change your change your closet. For example, maybe your clothing collection is not really you anymore. Maybe it doesn't match who you are. Maybe it's time to start replacing items in your closet or downsizing your closet or paring it down, whatever that is, so that what you have in your closet, you love wearing. Because when you love what you wear, it changes your energetic about who you are with yourself. That's another thing you can do. 
Um, that also applies for jewelry, for ladies, makeup, other stuff like that, getting your hair done, stuff like that as well. These are things you can do to treat yourself that help you feel better about yourself. You can do something as simple as a self-love mirror meditation. Actually, it's actually a product I sell. I have, I have a guided meditation audio track, audio meditation to help you work with a mirror to practice self-love daily for over 30 days that will change your relationship with yourself as well. You can do it just by looking in the mirror and telling yourself you love yourself. My particular products, which are just not the price down pss, secret, um, you can jump into and get yourself because it will help you to really develop a routine practice and consistency of loving yourself that will start to deliver dividends everywhere in your life. So there's another thing you can do. Um, what else we look at? You can do. You can so you can do more exercise. Absolutely. I said I mentioned you go to the gym. You could also maybe maybe for example you haven't done anything like running or riding a bicycle or something. I'm to ride a bike myself and I love doing it because it not only is convenient to ride a bike to go different places, it feels good when I'm done. <laughs> I went for a ride on Saturday for a sprint down to the beach and back, which I hadn't done for a while. And the end, uh, when I came back, it felt so um, uplifting. Funny the thing was, and just sidebar completely, when I'm on the bike path, I do use earbuds and listen to music. And I have a bunch of stuff on my music collection. And one of the things I have on there, because I've got a couple of these tracks recorded, is some of the themes from the Avengers. Yes, from the Avengers. <laughs> And the thing about it is I didn't realize it, it's great music for bike riding because it's very uplifting and it's very um, energizing and, and it's, it's motivating. And so when I was riding bike back, that track just started playing. Literally, as I turned around, it's going to start to come back with a tailwind, which is great. And frankly, it was probably one of the best rides I've ever had. It wasn't actually the fastest, but the music was so like jubilant and uplifting because it's one of the themes from the Avengers movies. They're on YouTube. You can find them if you want to look for them. And it was just it just sounded so great. So I would I basically had a really good bike ride and I felt really good afterwards. So little things like that can work. There are things you can do for yourself that are not gonna cost you lots of money. I'm not gonna go and get surgery or something like that. But I'm talking about just things you can do to take care of yourself and honor yourself and love yourself that basically means that you put more quality in, so then you can put more quality out. And my thing about this is having a real desire to put your life first, put your love first. If you're single, you'll actually change the choices you make when you're dating. How so? When you raise the vibration of what you're appreciating about yourself, you become attractive to a different level of person. So if you're single and you want to raise the quality of relationships you, you attract, this is one of the secret ways, by the way. You do this, it will change everything. So I'm, I'm just thinking I want to give more of this. I'm a couple of things I want to just say, because this is, this is as, as you may have guessed, I'm enthusiastic about this. And let me just say this also. Um, this is becoming more of my work. My work is about, it's the self-relationship before the other relationships, because it's really where the work is. Any other coach talks you about, I'll get you dating, get you in a relationship, that's great, but it's mechanical. If you want to really raise the quality and the experience of relationships, it starts inside of you. And that's why I'm talking to you about it now. You may have noticed my broadcast over the last two weeks I've been really focusing towards this because it keeps coming up as a message I want to keep teaching because really the, where the juice is, where, this, where, the, where the, the, um, the transformation happens. So this may be a paradigm shift for you. If it is, good. If it isn't and this makes sense to you, even better. So again, I'm going to put links, some links in the comments to let you know about a couple of these. One, as I mentioned my book as I did at the beginning, that's going to go in the comments. Also my self-love practice, so if you want to actually use the guided meditations I provide, an AM and a PM with a workbook. Um, with mu it has music, it's really nice. <laughs> I'm kind of biased. I'll put the links in the comments, you can check them out. That's those two things. And thirdly, um, I'm putting an invitation in there for my new self-mastery program called Coming Home to Yourself, because it is about coming home to yourself. That is my passion, that's my work, and this new offering is really the launch of something big. And if you want to be in it at the beginning, it's a good time to check it out. Um, you can't register it for there, but you have to get, you can go, I'll give you the link to the, where you can read about it, and you can sign up for a chat with me so we can talk about it, because it's not a, um, it's not structured yet the way you might think it will be, but it's going to be great. Anyway, that's enough confusion I think I've given you on that one. Um, putting yourself first as a self-supported practice, and not as an ego choice, by the way, let me just clarify this. Self-appreciation, self-love is heart-centered, not egocentric and not selfish. I, like for example, my course is called Coming Home to Yourself with a big S because it means you're coming home to the bigger part of who you are, your consciousness, your heart, your joy, your love, those pieces. Your ego is a smaller part of yourself, so that's a small S. So I'm calling it Coming Home to Yourself with capital Y, capital S. 
There's a reason for that. It's actually intentional. So what I'm speaking about here is how do you raise your own self-reflection, self-love, self-support that honors and respects who you really are. When you do that, your life will transform, as will every relationship around you. As I mentioned at the beginning, one relationship to rule them all. It is like that ring in, in Lord of the Rings. So if you think about it that way, it'd be a smart choice. Again, links will be in the comments for you to check out. This is my daily Facebook Live I do every day, at four, usually at 5 p.m., doing it at 4 p.m. today because I have to leave early today. Um, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays are on my business page, which is uh, barryselby.author. We can like my page and follow along there. And also you can check on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby as well. All my social media is Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages of the Masculine. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, by the way. And um, I was going to say, if you want to join me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual broadcast, there should be somewhere around the broadcast. I think it's three dots somewhere up above. You click on that, there's a little list that pops up, and at the bottom is something about more, op I think it's more options. And you can then say, be notified next time I go live. That way you can be here when I go live. You can interact directly with me. We can have Q&A whilst I'm talking. That's the benefit of being with me live, by the way. If you want to put comments and thoughts, questions below when I sign off, I'll do that when I resp I'll respond later on. Um, and that's about it. I appreciate being with me as always, and I thank you for watching. I invite you to take care of yourself better than you've done before. Use this information to help you uplift your own relationship with yourself and see what magic can happen. And check out the links. You might find that some of those fit what you need. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.